often do narcissists live a double life? That's what we're talking about today, queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Does that sound good to you? If so, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. So we always hear about narcissists cheating, but how serious does it become? Well, there's almost always a double life factor with a narcissist, whether it's cheating related or otherwise. But why do they do it and how do they do it? What's it all about? Let's start here. If we're honest with ourselves, we can admit that most narcissists seem to be looking for something. They're looking for supply. They're looking for love. They're looking for, well, maybe a different kind of love than we're looking for. <laughs> But they're looking for something, right? Sure, they might say they want love and caring and hope and all this stuff, but in the in reality, they feel very uncomfortable if they ever find anyone to love them, which is probably part of the reason you ended up where you are right now. Being in love with a narcissist is difficult, but for a narcissist, being in love isn't really the same as it is for other people. Now, if they were really digging into it, if they were really trying to feel what love is all about, they would have to admit that they're terrified of it. And the reason, in my opinion, that they're so terrified is they're afraid that if they allow themselves to let go and love you for real, you might leave them. Almost every narcissist that I've ever known has had a serious fear of abandonment. And so they tend to doubt your authenticity. Even if you've been with them for 35 damn years, they tend to pretend that you're not authentic or believe that you're not authentically there for them. They devalue you because you love them. It all comes down to the fact that because they know they can never live up to anyone's expectations, they also think that other people can't live up to theirs. And the truth is, as we've talked about before, narcissists don't really like themselves very much. And so they project their negative qualities onto you. But how does this, what does this have to do with them living a double life? We can look at this from a few different angles. First of all, love feels unsafe to a narcissist, and that's why it seems like they're always looking for a better supply. They prefer to be admired because to them, ad admiration feels safe. It's earned, you see, it's earned, whereas love is, is given, even though in my opinion, love is also earned a little bit. But since the narcissist earns admiration through, in their opinion, their different you know experiences and their different credentials and their different um, accomplishments, they feel a lot safer being admired. And that is part of the reason that some narcissists do the whole double life thing. They want to seek attention, as we all know, but also admiration from a wide variety of people. They would rather have a whole bunch of people admire them than be loved by one person. The fact is that narcissists live in a big, fear-filled mess of a world. They're always afraid of being exposed. They're always afraid of being abandoned. And they're always afraid of losing control. This leads them to kind of live in a constant fight or flight mode. So they're always on the defense. They're always unable to let their guard down. And as a result, they don't really find themselves attaching to people in a healthy way, which means that inevitably they destroy the relationship, which is unfortunately with a narcissist unavoidable unless you're really willing to hold on tight. Some narcissists are very aware of the fact that they are living a double life and that they're hurting you in that process or that they potentially could hurt you in that process. Others, such as the less self-aware narcissists, the covert types more often, they have no idea. They don't know they're narcissistic and they don't know that they're hurting anyone. These types go through life thinking everybody else is the problem, blaming everybody else for their bad behavior. Even, even if you've got a whole bunch of evidence against them, they will blatantly deny it and, and call you crazy and tell you that you have, you know, they, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Even if the evidence directly points to them, they will still attempt to manipulate the situation in their favor. And this will be without even knowing what they're doing. It's almost subconscious for some narcissists, but they're wired to act a certain way. And that's partially selfishly. They can't admit that they're abusers. In fact, they will actually flip the switch and say, oh, you're abusing me. They blatantly criticize you. They rage against you in public sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. They directly insult you and they give you the silent treatment if you criticize them or they rage back. But here's the thing, they don't wake up in the morning and go, hmm, who should I victimize today? These types, it's all about how they're wired. What it all comes down to is that the narcissist is always looking for A, a better source of supply, B, admiration, not love, C, attention. All of these things put together often cause them to lead a double life. 
maybe they've got a good source of supply at home, but they still feel like they need some more supply. They need maybe their at home supply doesn't quite, you know, do every little thing they want. But inevitably, these types will go off, and some narcissists will go and flirt. They will always have a crush on somebody who isn't their main source of supply. They will become addicted to pornography. They're very susceptible to almost any kind of addiction, to be honest with you. They will have online affairs with people because it satisfies their need to get attention, get admiration, and as long as they keep it online, they're not technically cheating. Of course, those are your more ethical narcissists. But in reality, if their significant other believes that cheating includes online affairs, well, then they're cheating. In my opinion, it does. An emotional affair, in some ways, is almost worse than a physical affair. What do you think? Share your thoughts below. Would you rather deal with someone who had an emotional affair, an emotional affair or a physical affair? I personally think they're both horrible and painful. But would an emotional affair somehow be worse because of the fact that it's not just about the physical, it's about the mental connection that, as you probably understand, most supply, most people who are with a narcissist are desperately craving a, 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 an intellectual or emotional connection to that person. And to find out that that person is giving their emotions to another person might even hurt worse than a physical connection, a, a physical cheat, cheating situation. What do you think? When someone is a narcissist and they're not getting what they consider to be enough attention at home, which may or may not actually be the case, they find themselves feeling super lonely, super desperate for attention, and that's when they, they need someone to sort of adore them. They might even say to you, why don't you adore me? You know, and, and you, how could I adore someone who attacks me all the time, right? They have this idea of what the perfect person is in their head, and unfortunately, that person doesn't exist in real life. But the fantasy of it can make it very hard for them to get along with the people who are in their real lives. And quite often they end up going out and hooking up with somebody else just because they need that attention, that admiration. And because it's so easy to be perfect for someone you don't live with, isn't it? That's why a lot of these times, they, a lot of narcissists end up in double life situations with people in long distance relationships. Because when you only see each other once a year or once a month or even every weekend, it's real easy to be perfect. It's real easy to be perfect from far away. The narcissist you know, puts everybody in their own little compartments. All the little pieces of the narcissist's life in their mind are in different compartments. They compartmentalize their lives. And they do this to keep their important relationships separate from one another. This way, nobody finds out about anybody else and there's no drama unless they want drama. It is how the narcissist manages to put you in the silent treatment for as long as they do because they compartmentalize that relationship. And of course, they expect you to just be there and stay there and wait for them forever while you're in your little compartment of silence. Of course, while the narcissist is giving you the silent treatment, he or she may be over there with another source of supply, you know, love bombing or hoovering or whatever. Then when that gets boring, they might swing back over to your compartment to see what's up with you and see what they can get into, right? Are they just pathological liars? Is it possible that this person that we thought we loved could really have no problem with living this full of shit double life they're talking about? How do you just walk away from somebody you've been with forever and reject them like it meant nothing. Narcissists don't know how to put a handle on their emotions, and so what they do is they just focus on the ones they're good at. You know, anger, nothingness, rudeness. Basically, narcissists see everybody as equally important or unimportant in their life. So their wife or husband will have no level, of, no priority above their coworker or the person they're cheating with or whatever. Here's the harsh truth. Basically, you mean nothing to a narcissist, or at least nothing more than any other significant person in their lives. Everyone in, in a narcissist's life serves a purpose. It could be you, it could be the person who checked him out at the grocery store this morning, it could be her coworker, it could be his, you know, lawn person or whatever. It doesn't matter. Everyone's on an equal playing field with a narcissist and that is below the narcissist for the most part. Everyone serves a purpose and if you dare to stop serving your purpose in any way, shape or form, well, the narcissist will just give your job to somebody else 
or stop wanting that thing done for them. This is why narcissists tend to switch jobs very quickly or quit jobs very quickly or walk out on their kids without even thinking a second thought about it or get a new cell phone number every five minutes or tell everybody a bunch of lies about you all over town and then come love bomb you the next day or leave your marriage after 20 years or cheat on you with your best friend or make promises over and over only to break them over and over and you fall for them because you love this person and you're doing your very best to make the thing work. It was never about you. It was always about the narcissist. You're not crazy. You're not weird. You're not bad. The narcissist is one messed up person. If your narcissist is living a double life, a double life, get the hell out of there. It's no, you can't ever compete for their attention because it will be short lived even if you get it. And do you really want to have to compete? for the attention of someone who claims to love you ever for anyone i don't the fact is we're human we're all human and being a human means we have to deal with certain amounts of deceit okay some sometimes we lie to ourselves sometimes we lie to other people sometimes we lie to both narcissists both they commonly have secret lives double lies and it could be relatively harmless but the fact of the matter is regular people like you and me we might have little secrets, right? Like we might say we're on a diet and really eat ice cream, or we might say to our spouses, you know, I only spent $20 on this thing and really have spent 40. These are little secrets, probably should be more honest, but who are we really hurting there, right? But some people feel really unhappy or trapped in their lives and narcissists are habitually miserable on purpose, I think. They need to break free. They need to find a way to change things all the time. You ever notice how a narcissist even though they hate change that they didn't create, they're always looking for new exciting things to do. You feel like you have to entertain them a little bit sometimes. Narcissists are all about the secret double life. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care what happens. They just want what they want when they want it. And that's what it's all about. There are certain signs you're going to want, want to watch for when it comes to dealing with a narcissist who might be living a double life. So here are a few warning signs for you. Their behavior is different. They started wearing different clothes or they started going to the gym when they never had before. They carry around something or that you, you smell strange things like in their laundry or in their on their person, different smells than you have before. Maybe they have unexplained expenses or they spend a little too much time on the computer where they didn't before. Maybe suddenly they're staying out late saying they're working or not explaining what they're doing, starting fights so they can leave the house, stuff like that. Sometimes it's just a sense of intuition that you get. And watch them while they're with you. Are they daydreaming sometimes, thinking about, you know, kind of off in their own head when they weren't like that before? Are they suddenly hiding their phone or, you know, they have a passcode on their phone now where they didn't before? Watch for the little signs like this. This is going to help you know if your significant other is living a double life. All right. This brings me to the question of the day. Do you know a narcissist who has lived a double life and how did it affect you if it did at all? Let me know your thoughts and your experiences. Share them in the comments below. You never know. You might help another survivor to realize they're not so alone after all. All right. That's all I've got for you right now. Thanks so much for being a part of my life and a part of my day. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.